manual because I love driving in manual, I prefer manual. Foot flat. Ooh. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel once again. Welcome to another great review. Now you join me again in another VW Golf, but this time it's the sixth generation, so the Mark 6 R. So this car is very important uh, for the Golf R lineup, especially uh, for paving the way for the modern R as we know it today and love. So this one is very nice. Uh, it looks very good, actually. Still drives beautifully. Uh, big thanks to the owner Mo. Uh, his Instagram is on screen right now. Do check him out because he has allowed me to head over to his house, pick up, uh, pick up the car, and uh, we drove here together. Uh, he's been driving his other car, the Audi S3, which is very great. I've been enjoying uh, this car thus far. I've had uh, some good time to get my grip uh, around it, try to understand it a little bit uh, better. So I really do hope you guys enjoy this review. Uh, let's get into it. My goodness, it's super windy, but here's the car. I hope you guys can hear me. So the Mark 6 generation came with a lot of big changes, but it also paved the way for the modern R as we know it and love it today. It was the first to choose the R name because the two cars that came before it, the fifth generation and the fourth generation, were called the R32. It introduced the two-liter turbo four-cylinder motor, uh, but some people weren't so pleased with it because its predecessor, uh, the Golf 5 R32, had uh, the VR6 uh, naturally aspirated motor, which sounded absolutely glorious. But because today we love our 7th generation R and the 8th generation, this car is very significant for the R lineup. Like I said, it paved the way for the modern R as we know it today. So let's get into the looks. So up front, you have xenon headlights and uh, the daytime running lights are down here you know uh, nowadays with the seventh generation and the eighth the daytime running lights are inside uh, the main unit right there so you have these deeper and protruding front bumpers which look uh, aggressive i also love these horizontal slats that match the grille as well so when you look at the car from say here everything just matches uh, so nicely and it looks glorious this one has uh, a gloss black uh, VW uh, logo which looks marvelous so our badge right there which till this day they still do it like this but they've changed uh, the font a little bit on the eighth generation so coming to the side this one has aftermarket uh, rims or wheels and they look phenomenal look at how beautiful they are i love the yellow calipers as well because yellow and blue matches very well so these rims are very beautiful actually they look like they've been painted with some pearlescent paint or something uh the color is like a titanium gray very lovely rims i do like those so gloss black mirrors so this was before they started uh doing that r logo on the side of the car on the front fender and all. so coming around to the back the tail lights to begin with i love these because these tail lights remind me a little bit uh, of the 
the OLEDs that you find on the BMW M4 CS. Just look at them a little bit. Like that kind of pattern and all. Uh, they look quite similar. So there's something very significant about this car. Uh, and that has to do with the tailpipes. So these previous R cars and the R32s, they used to have these two center mounted pipes, which looks uh, ever so cool. But they've done away with that, uh, with uh, starting with the seventh generation R, and now they have quad tailpipes. It was a little bit sad to see because this was so cool. Growing up as a kid, I remember seeing uh, Golf 5 R32s, I always found them so cool uh, with these pipes. But I think they've once done uh, a concept car based on the 7R. I think it was called uh, the R400, something like that. Do you guys remember that thing? That thing looked so cool and it had these uh, center pipes. I really wished they would have uh, went ahead and uh, made that into a full-blown production car. But you have this R badge right here, which even on the 7R, it still uh, is like that. So this is the whole profile of the car from back here still looks marvelous but to me it kind of looks smaller than the seventh generation or even the eighth i don't know if i'm crazy but that's what it looks like uh from my eyes so let's check out the interior so the interior one thing i love about this interior is that it hasn't actually aged all that much it's still modern enough uh for today uh and also it's not as fussy as like uh the Mark 8 R's interior, which has all those uh, touch buttons and whatnot, which aren't all that intuitive or that usable when you're driving and all. This is very simplistic, it's very clean, and uh, yeah, I really do love it. So you have this lovely uh, perforated uh, steering wheel, or oh, before that, little R logo right there on the door sill. You guys know, I love uh badged door sills uh so jumping inside so as i was saying you have this perforated steering wheel which looks amazing the way it just sits into your hands as well like i said uh i've driven it here like it's it's just perfect it has this little uh r badge right there at the bottom uh the steering wheel is also a uh, flat bottom which is cool so i think uh not really sure don't quote me on this i think they've started with the blue dials uh on this sixth generation because uh the mark 7 also has these blue dials which look uh they look cool they look lovely so you have the center infotainment screen the graphics are a little bit meh Ooh. the graphics are a little bit mm, but uh what do you expect from this thing these came out first when 2010 2011 they're about uh for for that age it's yeah, it's cool. Uh, no Bluetooth. Uh, you can all. Uh, you can only plug in uh, your aux cord if you want to play music. But other than that, the interior is very nice. Good quality, as we've come to know with the Golf. You have this little piece that's like aluminium-like with a little R uh, badge right there, which is very cool. The seats as well are marvelous. Like the way the headrest is just uh, sunk down into uh, the main unit of the seat is just cool. So. R badge on the headrest which is ever so cool one thing that impresses me as well is that this car has over 200,000 kilometers uh, but you want the seats uh, don't have all that much creasing uh, uh, these things are potent uh, to you know the, the bolsters bursting or rupturing especially somewhere around here I've seen a lot of Gol 7 R's where uh, the side bolster has actually ruptured or starting to just you know deteriorate and all but this one is is decently nice for its age and also the mileage you have climate control and everything here everything is as yeah it's it's nice it's lovely i mean if you could only afford this and you can't afford say a 7r or 7.5r or even the 8r uh this would be this would be lovely i think i'd be i'd be content with this like it's it's amazing one other thing i love is the paddles down there these paddles they just look so cool especially the accelerator paddle the way it's so long and like the way they're aluminium it's just so cool they look so clean they look so cool i absolutely uh love them uh let's take a listen to the exhaust because it sounds really good the owner is not sure if the car is stock because he bought it from auction but it sounds amazing it burbles it does all that but it's not obnoxious it's it's just perfect it's just the right amount so let's take a listen at, oh before the exhaust let's actually check out the engine 
because we haven't checked that out so engine then exhaust let's check that out so guys here's the motor so engine code uh ea113 so this motor is actually shared uh with the mark 5 gti which is a bit odd but it's a little bit different or actually very different to the ones you get in like uh the seventh generation or basically the newer uh golfs so it's still a two liter uh turbo four cylinder motor but in here it pushes around 270 horsepower which is around 188 kilowatts and 350 newton meters of torque so six speed uh dual clutch uh transmission uh dsg and uh all the power is going to all four wheels so it's uh, all wheel drive so pretty much a uh, similar setup uh to um, the 7r and uh the 8r but the engine unit itself it's uh a little bit different uh to those cars so let's take a listen to uh at how it sounds which one is correct two or at what You join me inside the Mark 6 Golf R. Let's go for a quick drive. Oh, these bricks are a little bit disturbing here. Uh, this is kind of my studio now because I'm doing a lot of videos right here now. But yeah, like I've already mentioned in the video, on our way here, I've been driving the car, so I've had a good feel of it. Uh, Yo, I'm also shocked by those pops and bangs. You guys uh, heard that right now when I when I was revving the car. Yo, it sounds insane. The feckless drive in sport. Uh, drive manual, because I love driving in manual. I prefer manual. Foot flat. Whoa. <laughs> so the owner tells me that he doesn't know what's been done to the car so it could be stuck it could not be stuck uh, so I also have no idea but I've already told you guys the stock numbers so around 270 horsepower 188 uh, kilowatts and uh, yeah, it feels quick so remember this thing has more power than a 7 GTI more power than a 7.5 GTI more power uh, than an 8 GTI so performance wise it's still up there with those cars so you buy this you're still as fast as all those cars the only cars that will be faster than you is are uh, the R's so the 7R and uh, the 8R but the GTIs small boys small boys and girls Whoa, I can also hear the turbo noise which sounds phenomenal my goodness this thing is snappy It drives really nicely. I do love it. Uh, let's go down here for now. Whoa. Wow, the six R is it's phenomenal. The steering wheel feel as well is is just incredible. Uh, Try and do another pull. Let me just lower the window so that you guys can maybe you can you can hear it better with the window down, I'm not sure. mind uh the older interior or the old style interior then you should definitely go for this thing i don't see why not you should definitely go for this thing because they are trading for like 230 
330,000 rands now I saw it as a very uh, low mileage one uh, with like uh, 47,000 kilometers and that's like uh, 280,000 rands which is not bad for what you're getting for what you're getting it's totally not bad like It. I don't have anything more to say about this car. It's just incredible. It's just it's worth the money. Absolutely worth the money. Absolutely worth the money. So guys, that's pretty much it for the Golf R review. Uh how did you guys like it? What do you guys think about this car? Me personally, I think it's absolutely worth the money. If you can get over uh the older style interior and whatnot, uh I have no problem with it the performance is there and uh yeah still a lovely car really hoping you guys did enjoy this video and again big thanks to the owner mo uh for bringing out two of these cars out here uh letting me drive them and enjoy them and uh yeah that's pretty much great so thankful uh until next time guys that's cheers from me